Let's take a few minutes to look at z-scores and how to calculate them. Simply put, if you were a piece of data in a data set, your z-score measures how many standard deviations you are from the mean. And if your z-score is positive, it means you're above the mean. And if your z-score is negative, it means you're below the mean. So what we have here is the bell-shaped curve, also known as the normal distribution and it's symmetric and you'll notice that right at its center is the mean or the average and it's notated by the Greek symbol mu and then the x-axis has been marked off in increments of standard deviations so here is one standard deviation and then two and then three to the right of the mean and then also one two and three standard deviations to the left of the mean and what you'll notice is that about sixty eight percent of our data lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So their z-scores are between negative 1 and 1. And then 95% of our data lie between negative 2 and 2 standard deviations from the mean. So they have z-scores between negative 2 and 2. And then finally, almost all our data lie within 3 standard deviations of the mean. So they have z-scores between negative 3 and 3. And calculating a z-score is fairly quick, and here's how you go about it. If you're a piece of data in a distribution, to get your z-score, you take your value and you subtract the mean, and that tells you how far away you are from the mean, either positive or negative, and then you divide that value by the standard deviation. So it basically takes that distance and evaluates it in increments of standard deviations. And on the next slide, I'll give you an example of how to calculate it with specific values and also show you why it might be a useful calculation to use. This chart shows some information from the 2004 Olympics, specifically the heptathlon, which is a uh, track and field competition of seven events that the uh, female athletes compete in to determine, I guess, the uh, best female athlete of the Games. And this chart shows two particular events. It shows the long jump, and it also shows the shot put. And it shows their average values, a long jump average of 6.16 and a shot put average of 13.29. And it shows the standard deviation, and then how many women competed in that event that day. And the winner of the long jump happened to be a woman named Kluft, and her long jump score was 6.78. And then Skuyate was the woman who won the shot put, and there's her score of 16.4. And what the judges in the heptathlon have to figure out is which of those two athletes distinguished themselves more in those respective events. And we can do that with z-scores. So for Kluft, what we'll do is we'll get her z-score for the long jump. And her z-score will be her actual long jump of 6.78 meters minus the mean 6.16 all divided by the standard deviation for that event which was 0.23 and if you calculate that z-score on your calculator you end up with the result of 2.7 so Kluft was nearly three standard deviations above the mean in the long jump now let's do something similar for Scoyate let's get her z-score so her actual score on the shot put was 16.4. The average or the mean for the shot put was only 13.29. And then her standard deviation for that event, or I should say all the women, was 1.24. And when you calculate that on your calculator, you get a z-score of 2.5. So we have their z-scores, and that actually tells us which athlete did better with respect to the rest of the athletes in those events. And you can see that Kluft did better overall in, in the long jump than Scoyate did in the shot put. And it's those values that get factored into calculating the number of points that these various athletes earn in the different events that eventually get added up and determine who won the heptathlon. Okay, let's add one more wrinkle to our discussion and let's see if we can take z-scores and work backwards to figure out a class mean and a class standard deviation. So we have two students here, one who got a 73% with a z-score of negative 
So that student's equation would be negative 0.5 equals 73 minus the unknown mean divided by the unknown standard deviation. And then the other student had a z-score of 1.3, and that student's actual score was 91, and then we would subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So what we have here are two equations, two unknowns. I know you're getting excited because two equations and two unknowns we can solve to figure out our two variables. So let's do it. I'm going to write the first equation a little bit differently by multiplying both sides by sigma, and I get this equation. And then I'm going to take the second equation and do the same thing, multiply by sigma, and I have that equation. And now I'm going to add these equations um, to, to get something to cancel out. And I think I'm going to multiply this first equation by negative 1 and then add. And then when I do that, the, uh, the um, mu's will cancel out. And then I'll have negative 1 times 73 plus 91, which is 18. And then I'll have a positive 0.5 sigma and a 1.3 sigma makes a 1.8 sigma. So therefore, our standard deviation must be 10. And if our standard deviation is 10, I can put it back into either equation here. And when I do that, I will figure out or learn that sigma is, I think, 78. So we've taken two equations, solved them, and we've learned that the mean, the class average on this test was a 78 and the standard deviation was 10. So about 68% of the students got between a 68 and an 88. That's it.